Hello and welcome. You're watching a live lesson from Digital DJ Tips, the world's biggest online DJ school, and also the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the number one best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. I'll tell you how you can get a copy of this book for yourself for free at the end, but straight to today's topic, which is a DJ's guide to microphones. I want to talk to you today about what different types of microphones are out there. And so you'll, by the end of this, know all you need to know as a DJ about the different types of microphones, which one might be right for you, which ones aren't right for you for sure, and be able to uh, choose with a little bit of knowledge when it comes to buying one. <clears throat> now, in today's lesson, I'm talking about microphones by a particular company called Shaw uh, and another company called Blue Microphones, but that is basically because they're the ones we've got in the studio. There's lots of great microphone companies out there and lots of great brands out there, so don't take my recommendations as gospel, do your own research, but just to give examples, I'll, I'll, I'll take from what we know. Today we're going to talk about the difference between dynamic and condenser microphones. We're going to talk about the difference between omnidirectional and unidirectional microphones, uh, and mono and stereo come to that. We're going to talk about the different kinds of microphones. I'm wearing a microphone here, but I've got a very different type of microphone here, for instance, and which ones might be right for DJs. We'll touch on cables. We'll talk about the difference between analog and digital microphones. And we will talk finally about wireless microphones. And I will give you recommendations for all those types. As ever, this is a live lesson. So if you're lucky enough to be here live on YouTube or Facebook, Facebook is the best place to be watching this, then do ask questions. You can ask in the comments. Just use the hashtag ASK, hashtag ask. If you'd like to ask a question and we'll get to you, even if we don't get to you live, and we probably won't, lots of people ask questions on these things, we will get to you afterwards. My team will be looking for your questions uh, and honing in on them in the comments after the broadcast has finished. Uh, so we're pretty much ready to go. I just want to say a quick hello to a couple of our regulars, not least because I just want to check the broadcast is working all right. We've had all kinds of technical problems today. So I just want to make sure we're live. It looks like we are. Hello to Rich and DJ Skojo, to Christian over there in the Philippines, to Brian, uh, TRMBZ TV, uh, to Miggy also in the Philippines, Typho uh, Typhoon going on there at the moment. Uh, Jai Panay says, great topic, Phil. Uh, hello to Daniel uh, and says, great subject. What do you think about AKG mics? Yep, AKG mics are great as well. Hi to Reza and Eddie and Papa D, John, Chris, Housemaster J, Jared, you don't like my music, Martin, and everyone else saying hello. Right, we are obviously live. It's obviously all working okay. So let's get on with today's lesson. And as I said, do ask questions, hashtag ask. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the reason for knowing this. Look, it's really important to understand your microphones. Even if you're a club DJ, you will at some point be asked to get on the microphone. And so we're not going to talk today about how to use a microphone, although we've got uh, training on that over on the Digital DJ Tips website. Just go to the search bar and search uh, microphones and you will find our training on how to use them. But you're going to need to know the types of microphones that are out there, the types you're likely to come across. And at some point, you're probably going to want to buy one. It's just one of those things that every DJ at some point, you might get asked to play a wedding for a friend and you're like, oh, I'm going to have to get on the microphone. I better buy one now. But there'll be a time when you have to buy one. So it's important to know this stuff. So I, I said I'd start off with the big difference between dynamic and condenser microphones. So let's do that right now. So there are basically two types of microphones. They fall into two categories, dynamic and condenser. A dynamic microphone is probably what you think of as a microphone. It looks like this. Let's see if we can get a close-up camera to give you a better view of this. There we go. There's a dynamic microphone. This is the classic Shure SM58. I say it's a classic because they've literally been manufactured for, I don't know, 50, 60 years or something. Uh, these are used for everything from handheld, singers, DJs, anyone who needs a mic, but also shoving against drum kits in front of mic amps, in front of uh, guitar amps, all that kind of stuff. They're a real all-rounder and they're a good example of a dynamic microphone. So a dynamic microphone, um, it has got good sound quality, but it's not the best. Uh, there's no power needed. You plug your lead into here, you plug it into your gear, that's it. It's your voice moving the, the, uh, the, uh, the insides makes the power. Um, it is um, less sensitive to sound than the condenser microphones we're about to talk about. So here it'd be nice and loud, here it'd be all right, over there it'll struggle to pick my voice up. This is a good thing sometimes, right? Especially for DJs. Uh, and these are rugged, these, these last a long time. This one is a copy of this. You will see an awful lot of these around that look exactly the same. And in fact, uh, on Amazon, you can get really, really good 
basic dynamic mics for about $20. Just go on Amazon, search dynamic mic, uh, and look for the ones with four and a half or above stars. And there's a couple on there for like $20 that work well. They're very simple manufacture. There's not much going on in these, and so they are very uh, durable. So that's a dynamic microphone. The other type of microphone that you're likely to find is a condenser microphone. Now, condenser nut microphones are a different beast entirely. They tend to be found in studios rather than out and about, uh, and generally in places where sensitivity is needed and the very best sound quality, typically for singers in a studio environment or for picking up instruments that have got a lot of layers to them and they're just um, a delicate... Um, there's a delicacy about a condenser microphone that you don't get from uh, a, a dynamic mic like this. They're often used by podcasters, you know, for that, like you put your headphones in and the podcaster sounds like they're literally whispering in your ear and you can hear everything and it's very intimate. Uh, condenser microphones then have the best sound. They also, uh, unlike these, do not, uh, these don't need power, but they need power. Uh, and they are very sensitive to sound. So generally a condenser microphone, if you're not in a very quiet room and something goes ping in the corridor, as often happens here, then you're going to hear it. Uh, and they're delicate, they, they need to be treated a little bit more delicately. So clearly already for DJing, dynamic microphones are probably best. They're less sensitive, so unless it's in front of your face, it won't pick up too much. Uh, they last a long time, you can throw them in your bag. They don't need special power or anything. It's called phantom power and some production mixers and special live mixers will provide that to mics, DJ gear won't. So generally for DJing, dynamic and for studios and podcasting, condenser microphones are the one to go for. Uh, so I've already given you an example of a, a very famous um, studio mic. This is a Shure, sorry, a, a conde uh, let's get my words out, a dynamic mic, that's this one here, the Shure SM58. Uh, but a good example of a, um, of a condenser mic is this one here. This is another Shure mic. Uh, this is called the SM58. 7B. That's quite an interesting shot. I seem to have a uh, the overhead shot in the corner there. Oh, I like that. How long's that been there? Uh, it's called the SM7B, uh, and that is uh, quite an expensive mic, and it's just one of those that you hear everyone talking about when they are in studios and podcasting situations. So now we know the difference between dynamic and condenser microphones. Let's talk about the difference between omnidirectional and unidirectional. So you can probably guess. Oh, by the way, I've got a, this is a um, condenser microphone, another one. This is one I use. This is a Blue Microphones condenser microphone. You might have seen me with this in, in our podcasts and in our times when I'm sat just doing a Q&A session. If I actually put that down there, I can probably zoom in on it and show you it in a bit more detail. So this has got, on this side here, it's got controls which let you uh, not only alter the volume of the microphone, but also what I'm talking about now because this one can be set to different um, directionality. Uh, and over on here on the front, you can see there's a light on it. It's currently play pause, that's why it's flashing. Um, and a volume control here. So this has got power going to it. It's a powered microphone and condenser microphones have power going to them. So there's an example of a condenser microphone right there. So omnidirectional versus unidirectional. Omnidirectional tend to be the condenser mics. They tend to be the ones that will pick up everything. This one here is unusual. It's got a switch that will make it a little bit more like one of these. But generally, they tend to be the condenser mics and they will pick up everything. So not only are condenser mics more, more sensitive, but they pick up everything from all around as well. So doubly, you need to be sure you're in a quiet environment for them. Obviously, for DJing, a Omni mic, a uni mic is probably better. An omni mic like that is going to pick up everything that's going on around it. Uh, they're sometimes referred to as cardioid, cardioid pattern, which basically just means it picks up a lot at the front and not very much at the back. Uh, worth mentioning here, actually, that some microphones are stereo. This microphone here, this blue microphone, is a stereo one. So this can pick up left and right and so give you that sense of things moving around. So if you're trying to mic up like a whole band, with one microphone, a really good condenser microphone in the middle of the room might be good because everything will naturally take its space in the soundscape when you listen on the headphones. So most microphones are mono, but just be aware that some can be stereo. What about the actual types of microphone? Now we know the technologies, what about the types? Well, this type, this type, they're kind of related, right? These are the type of microphones that you well, I guess you wouldn't hold this one in your hand, uh, but this one can go on a stand. You know, this on a stand, that on a stand, same kind of thing. Uh, but there are also microphones that come on a headset and also microphones that uh, are like this one here on a lapel. This, this is what I'm actually talking to you through at the moment. 
So which one's best? Well, for DJ, you might again think, oh, well, just something like this. Maybe on a stand, you see Jazzy Jeff, our tutor, doing this on his live streams with a, a Shure SM58 on a stand. Um, or just to, to hold, hold in your hand, that's kind of DJing, isn't it? But don't be too sure because some DJs can use this kind of microphone. This kind of microphone actually is, is wireless. It's something we'll get onto in a minute. It's got a wire pack here, so I can go anywhere with this. I'm not wired to anything. Um, because these can be useful, maybe not so much for the DJ themselves, but if you're a mobile DJ and you have got people who are not used to using microphones, like people giving speeches and stuff, if you put a lapel microphone on them and they just talk, you know, I'm not worried about whether I'm close enough or further away from the microphone here, it's just there, you can hear me. And so if you put one of these on someone who is not used to using a microphone, like the father of the bride or whatever, someone giving a speech uh, as part of your performance, then you don't need to worry about them. You can just control the volume from your unit and they'll be, they'll be good. But if you give them a mic like this, I guarantee that they're gonna just start accidentally moving away like this and it's all gonna go a bit quiet. And you're gonna have to keep going. And they'll, they'll do that, then they'll forget again. So it might be worth thinking about using a headset microphone if you are using talent, you're using other people apart from you as part of what you do as a DJ. Uh, but other than that, I think most DJs will use something that they can hold in their hands or something that they can pull in on a stand, although not a condenser mic, probably a dynamic mic. Now, when it comes to cabling, that's easy. All microphones have a socket in them and you put a cable from there to your DJ unit. It will either be an XLR, which is the big kind of chunky sockets. I did want to show you some cables, but unfortunately they all seem to be in one of, the, one of our gig bags somewhere. Um, but if I just um, show you the end here, so that's kind of like the, the male bit. So a female plug will go in there and then the other end will be a look a bit like this and that goes into your DJ gear. And or it'll be, uh, basically it's called a TRS socket, and a TRS socket looks exactly like a headphone socket. So the socket on any pair of headphones In fact, that lead's not even connected to any headphones. It looks just like this. That's a headphones socket, but also that will work as a on a lead that's meant for a microphone as well. Generally, it doesn't matter which type your mic has got because generally on the back of DJ gear, uh, or the front, they'll have at least one socket that can accept both. It's called like an Omni socket. It can accept the bigger ones, the XLRs and these. They're balanced, the cables are called balanced and that means that because the microphones, uh, frequent, not frequencies, the microphones, the level of current in the lead is very, very low because there's no power being fed to it. It's just being a little magnet in here moving around to create it. So very low, low, low voltage going through. And that means that it's quite susceptible to interference. So therefore the, the, the cables are balanced and that's another way of saying shielded. So they're shielded from any, any issues that might happen, any buzz or hum on the line. Now, we were talking about how mics like this this uh, condenser microphone here need power, right? Another kind of mic you might, you might come across is the digital microphone. Now this is actually a digital microphone, this one I've got up here, as is this little one I've got here. These are designed not to plug into your DJ gear, but to plug into your computer. So these have got a built-in audio interface. They take their power from the USB socket on your computer that plugs into the back, and then they work as both an audio interface for the microphone and a microphone. This is another condenser microphone here. So these are very, very useful if you're needing to do any, like quite often live streaming or podcasting, because if you're doing that from a laptop, one of these will plug straight into the laptop and give you uh, an easy way of getting your microphone digitized and into the laptop. So be aware, there aren't many that are both digital and analog. And so you'll have to choose. There is a version of this one here, the Blue Microphones Yeti, this is called, uh, that, is a ver that is both analog and digital. Uh, but I don't think I can think of any others that are. So usually you'll go for an analog mic because you're plugging straight into DJ gear. The only other kind of mic, I've, well, I've touched on it a little bit with this kind of specialized lapel microphone, but the only other kind of mic I want to, uh, I want to show you is this one here. Uh, not this one here. I wonder why I've got that little picture in the bottom corner there. Let's get rid of that. Off you go. Uh, not that one there, we've already talked about that one, but this one here. It's basically a, um, a handheld, dynamic, 
unidirectional, in other words, just like the Shure SM58, but it's wireless. This is the QLXD4, also from Shure. And this is the kind of microphone that you would use if you want a wireless microphone for DJing with. Now, I have to put a proviso here. It does depend on where you are in the world because the frequencies that the microphones use and what's legal and not legal uh, and the, you know, the wave bands and all that, it does change in different places in the world. But any DJ store uh, that works in your, in your territory will know and will have in stock the type of microphone that works where you are. But the QLXD4 from Shure that I just showed you there is a good one. Okay, so that's kind of all I wanted to tell you about microphones. As I said, we're not talking about using them today. If you want to know how to use microphones, we have got coverage of that, and I'll, I'll try and draw it up for you now. Uh, but instead today, we've talked about dynamic and condenser. Have I gone weird again? We've got to figure this out. That keeps happening on that uh, camera. Uh, we talked about dynamic and condenser, omni and uni, mono stereo, lapel, headset, handheld. We've talked about cables, digital, whether you want wireless or wired. Uh, and so hopefully you've got a better idea now, but. The most fun part of this is always chatting to you guys and girls. So let's head over there and let's do that right now. To the comment can we go? Hello, people. So uh, questions about microphones. Uh, while we remember, let me just show you where you can find not only coverage of uh, what we just talked about, because you'll find that here. I'm just trying to get you over to it. But this is not wanting to do that for me right this second. Let me see if I can do it from here. There we go. There's an article called A DJ's Guide to Microphones on Digital DJ Tips. And here's where I go through a lot of what we just spoke about. So if you want to have another look at this, get the model numbers again, click through to links and, uh, and learn some more stuff. It's all on this article. And this is what I wanted to show you. If you click the little magnifying glass at the top and type in microphones, you will find the article I just showed you, which is kind of what this lesson was based on, but also you'll find all our other microphone stuff, our other coverage, uh, including uh, how to record your sets uh, using microphones, how to, uh, how to use podcast microphones and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking here for our tips on using a microphone. I'm sure they exist somewhere, but uh, right now I'm struggling to find them. Uh, if I can't find them in the next couple of minutes, I will give up, but uh, but there we go. It's always when you promise someone something that you can't find it, isn't it? Uh, there's a good article there, four times DJs still need to use the microphone. If you were in any, under any illusion that uh, you can get away with not mo not using it, uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a, an article there. Anyway, go search microphones on Digital DJ Tips. We've got about 6,000 articles there, so even if you don't find what you want uh, on microphones, I bet you find something else you want to listen, you want to uh, you want to read. Right, folks, it's all about you now. So what have you got to say? How can I help you on the subject of microphones? Let's find out what you think. Uh, so Mo, any particular styles or types of mic to avoid for DJing? Yep, uh, avoid condenser microphones. Uh, Eddie, I've been using the same cordless microphone for six years. That has 30 channels, but I've recently been getting dropouts regardless if I change channels. Why is this? I don't know, Eddie, why that is. It could be that in your area, there's more stuff on those frequencies now, and so you're finding uh, it harder to get clean coverage between the two things. The, the way frequencies are used does change over the years. Uh, but and without knowing where you are, and even if I did know where you are, I think I'd probably not have the knowledge to be able to tell you about that. I would say go to a shop that sells microphones in your area with yours, and they might be able to tell you. Uh, why that's happening. Um, so <clears throat> you don't like my music. This is more about using microphones, but hey, no problem. Uh, I'm microphone shy because I have a terribly nasally voice. Any advice for avoiding the mic? Well, you don't have to use the microphone all the time. You know, it depends on the kind of DJ you are. If you are a a mixing DJ who plays clubs, the, the, you, don't, you won't use the mic often at all. But if you are asked to announce something, you know, the classic, can the owner of the white van move it from the car park? It's blocking the way. Uh, or anything else, then effectively, it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like, it's the information that matters. So my advice is to um, turn the microphone on, uh, hold it just in front of your mouth, turn the music off, don't, don't try and turn it down and talk over anything, turn the music off, um, get everyone's attention before you say what you want to say. say excuse me, everyone, can I have your attention, please? Uh, and then wait, and if, you, if everyone hasn't gone quiet, just say the same thing again. Excuse me, everyone, can I have your attention, please? And when everyone's quiet and looking at you, slowly and clearly say what you've been asked to say. 
uh, and if it's important, repeat it. And then just say thank you, turn the mic off and mix the music up again, slowly and clearly. Uh, and no, no kind of trying to be cool like a radio DJ over the music and stuff. It's not really about your voice. It's not about you even. It's about the important information you're getting out to the crowd at that point. Uh, so apart from that, you know, play gigs where you don't, where you're not expected to talk. Don't take mobile gigs where they, where they want someone to do a quiz, uh, halfway through if you don't like the microphone. <laughs> so, uh, Trims TV says, what's the best sounding microphone? It will always be condenser microphones, but dynamic microphones sound good enough for, for DJ use for sure. So uh, a reasonably good dynamic microphone. Uh, Jai Panade on Twitch, what's the best microphone to plug into a Yamaha AGO3 Combo XLR jack plug. Uh, so the Yamaha AGO3 is actually a really um, interesting device. So let's just go off topic a second and talk about the Yamaha AGO3 uh, and I'll show it to you. So the Yamaha AGO3 is an interesting, uh, in, an interesting choice of audio interface for DJ because it's actually also a mixer. So let's have a look at what the Yamaha AGO3 looks like. This is the Yamaha AGO3. It's a tiny little mixer that can mix together, in this instance, three inputs uh, into one output, but also it can send it straight to your computer. So it's an audio interface and a mixer. And it can even just take its power from the computer as well. Uh, there's another one called the AGO6, which I have. Uh, these are really, really cool to have in your bag. You'll just always find a use for a little mixer like this for sure. I love my AGO6. Uh, but in answer to your question, at the top of the unit, you can see top left of the unit there, is a uh, microphone input. Now this is the classic Omni Jack. This can plug in two types of microphone. I'm pretty sure it can. Anyway, it can on mine. Uh, yeah, it's an Omni Jack. Uh, so you can plug in the TRS and the XLRs into there. And the answer is, it doesn't matter. You can have any kind of mic you want plugged in there because it's got this red button here. And that red button here is the 48 volt phantom power button. This will send power into a condenser microphone. So it just depends on what you're using it for, why you're using it. If you're using it for uh, DJing, then you're gonna want a, a, dyna a dynamic microphone in my view, if you're using it for uh, a studio or podcasting, then maybe a, con a nice condenser mic on a stand would be better for you. This is from Christian. Is it normal for a dynamic mic to have a screeching noise or plate reverb effect? No, obviously a screeching noise is feedback. That's when you've got the microphone too near to the speaker. But no, other than that, uh, if, you can, if you turn the volume down and uh, you're getting a screeching noise or a plate reverb effect, it sounds like your microphone is broken, unfortunately, Christian. Uh, Craig, I have bought an SM58 wired mic for DJ use, but I want to invest in wireless systems for events like weddings. I know Shaw and Sennheiser, but should I go for these or others? Also, I want rack mounting. Uh, I'm not the person to advise on rack mounted wireless microphones uh, because I just don't have any experience with them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, however, I do know that the, the Shaw microphone that I uh, recommended to you earlier, this one here, the uh, QLXD4, while not rack mounted, it's probably half rack, um, but you can probably get mounts for it. It's a very, very good model. Uh, and a lot of people um, kind of swear by it. So maybe have a look at that one, Craig. This is from um, DJ101. What does the LPF switch do on a mic? This is really, um, a really good question. I'm not sure if it's called LPF, but anyway, there's a switch on a lot of microphone inputs on mixes and stuff, which basically cuts out the very low frequencies. And that's because the human voice, it hasn't got any low frequencies in it. They stop pretty high on the, on the, on the big spectrum. So what you're doing is stopping unwanted bass, unwanted rumbling, and potentially unwanted feedback from frequencies that just aren't normally being used with that kind of mic. So unless you're miking up a bass amplifier, you can press that switch and it'll probably just make your mic sound better in, in extreme circumstances. Um, what's the best lav mic in your opinion? Says Mike Beats. Again, I can only share what I know. Uh, we use the Shaw lav, it's not the Shaw, the, um, the Rode lav mics. So these, this is Rode. This is called the Rode Link. This is the transmitter box, which is wired into my little microphone here. The receiver box is actually under the desk there, plugged into uh, a audio interface feeding into the computer. Uh, these are rock solid. They sound pretty good. They, uh, the batteries last a long time. We use rechargeable batteries in these. Um, so yeah, the batteries are good. 
There's two two AA batteries in the back, uh, and we can't really fault them. They're, I guess the only thing I would say is that the the packs are a bit big. Uh, they come with a clip, but the clip always seems to break off or get lost, you know, for going on your belt. So we just end up putting them in our pockets. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've had them for you know five years, six years. Um, so they're called Road Link, uh, and you buy them as a pair. Um, so yeah, that's the one I would recommend to you. Um, so Dave wants to use a condenser mic on his Twitch stream instead of a handheld. What can you recommend for up to about two hundred pounds? I want to open. I want to talk openly without having to reach forward or hold a mic. Yeah. So the one I'd recommend you, uh, you can get a really good pack with the one that I'm about to pull into camera here, which is. I know it's out of focus. Uh, it's called the Blue Microphones Yeti. And the Blue Microphones Yeti uh, has got a, um, a really nice stand. It's a stand, I've got it on there. And it's got a dampening um, quality on the stand so that if you, know, if you bang your desk, the, the microphone won't, uh, won't, won't take up the vibrations. It's really good. It's what we, in fact, I could probably switch to it now and you can have a listen to what it sounds like. And the beauty about this is that you can set this up and you don't have to be very close to it. So let me switch over to the uh, Yeti. Hello, finally. Uh, it takes a while to switch for some reason when we're live. Okay, so you can hear the Yeti mic now. So it might be distorting a little bit, might be a little bit loud. Um, it sounds better than this one because it's a condenser microphone. And also it doesn't really matter if I'm kind of a bit, a bit away from it or a little bit closer to it. Obviously I get a bit louder and quieter. What do you think of that, people? Does it sound good to you? Uh, I think it's a lovely, lovely microphone. Um, and I'd thoroughly recommend it for about £200, $200. You get the mic, the stand, it can clamp to your desk uh, and it sounds very, very nice. So uh, it's a Blue Yeti microphone. Um, if you just search for Blue Yeti and you can buy a pack. There's a pack with all those parts I talked about in uh, for about $200. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope that's helpful to you there. Um, and right, more questions. Loving this today. It's a nice topic, isn't it? Uh, this is from DJ Kirk. I'm using my DDJ SB3 for live streaming, but I can't get the mic audio to work when streaming. Do you have any recommendations on how to get the mic audio to work? Yeah, so what's happening is your mic audio is going into your DDJ SB3, coming out the back via the, 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 the two RCA cables off to your speakers, but it's not being sent back to the computer. So if you're using the computer to capture the audio, then that won't work. That's why... I mean, this isn't a good example because it's a condenser microphone, but that's why a microphone that plugs into your computer is a better idea if you're going to be working that way. Uh, I would recommend there's one by IK Multimedia. and I'll actually find it for you now. IK Multimedia have got a very nice handheld microphone uh, that is digital. Uh, and that plugs directly into your, uh, directly into your, um, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Computer. It's actually a condenser microphone, which is unusual, but it uh, it does the job fine for for DJing. Uh, I've, I know the BBC, for instance, have bought loads of these and they send their reporters out with them. Uh, so this is what it looks like. The iRig Mic HD2, it's called. Uh, and this microphone uh, plugs directly into your... See this out put cable here is not an audio cable it's a usb cable uh, and as i say it plugs directly into your you see there's a usb socket on the back uh this plugs directly a you uh yeah usb plugs directly into your computer uh so it's a really nice choice for um if you have for whatever reason can't get the microphone a normal microphone plugged into your dj controller to work on your live streams uh, and we used it on our live streams early on when we had lockdown and we just had to make do with what we had lying around uh, and we wanted to go live that's the microphone that we used 
Uh, this is from JF Discos. I have a mixer that's got one mic channel, but separate XLR and quarter inch ports on the channel. So would I be able to plug in mics one on each port? Would this work at a gig? Yeah, it probably would. Um, you really want to make sure you've got microphones with an on-off switch. But I think that might work. I think you might be able to just get away with plugging them both in together. I'd certainly have a go at that, uh, JF Discos. Um, okay, I think we've answered most of your questions. Leon says, I missed the start. How do I watch from the start? As soon as we finish, we will, uh, the video will go live automatically as a replay on Facebook and you'll also be able to watch it on YouTube. But you can even ask questions. Uh, and we will still get to you with your questions afterwards. John, I use Q Audio QM, QWM 1960, two microphone system for just 200 pounds. It's got a full digital controller and digital screen on both controller and each mic, and I've never had any problem with them. Well worth it and recommended. Uh, cool. So uh, apparently the Elgato Wave is good. Um, Chris said, it's cool that you had a mic to demo for the budget. Yeah, even if it took me a minute to switch over. The software's recently doesn't like switching microphones. It's, uh, it just gives, gives me the, the, the beach ball for, yeah, as you saw, for that length of time. Um, so, um, um, yes, it sounds better than the lab, says Dave. Yeah, this is a lovely microphone for, for, for chatting into. Um, all right, I think we're done here today, people. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've got some value from this. I did say I'd let you know where you can get a copy of our book if you are interested in how to DJ from the very beginning. This is the book you want. Over 30,000 of these sold on Amazon and they are... Um, it still still does really well year after year. We're very proud of our book. I want you to have this. You can get an audio book. You can get a Kindle book. It's in bookstores, but you can also get it for free. And the way you get it for free is by going to that URL, digitaldjtips.com slash join, digitaldjtips.com slash join. And we will send you a copy of this via digital means uh, as a thank you for joining. Uh, but more importantly, you'll become our latest member and that means you get our Tuesday tips accompanying uh, free tutorial newsletter every week that accompanies these Tuesday tips live broadcasts. Uh, and in those free tutorial newsletters, you get reviews, you get the latest DJ news, you get free training, you get mixes from our DJs like Jazzy Jeff and Layback Luke, DJ Angelo uh, and, uh, and so on. And uh, you also uh, get links to uh, free lessons from our courses. So it's well worth getting that newsletter every week. And again, the way to get it and your free copy of the book and your free copy of the gear guide uh, is to go to digitaldjtips.com slash join. But today we've been talking about um, a DJ's guide to microphones. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up if you have. Uh, we will see you again on Thursday for our open mic session open mic no ama uh it basically it's uh it's up to you what we cover we just we just come live and and you ask the questions and we we will answer them for an hour i'll try and make the hour this week i had an unforeseen circumstance that meant i had to leave early last week but we'll try and make the full hour this week uh, we normally do that uh, and uh yeah i'll see you on thursday so we won't be having tuesday tips next week is actually the final tuesday tips uh before christmas and then we're going to have two weeks break so do make sure you join us next Next week for that one uh, thank you everyone for being here this week now get good get out there make the moments and i'll see you again very soon till next time bye bye